بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين رب العالمين اللهم لا سهلا إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his glorious Qur'an, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And he also said, كُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ I was asked to discuss the everyday sunnah of the Prophet and I'd like to remind you all that when we hear the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are commanded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon him. And so please, when I say Prophet, you all say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want, this, I want this hall to shake from the salawat, inshaAllah. And say it out loud so the person next to you, if they forgot, you'll remind them, inshaAllah. So while I was preparing for my speech tonight, I kept remembering a statement that I've heard over and over and over again during my many years of teaching. And I was wondering if you all have ever heard that statement either. Or if perhaps you are one of the people who have said this statement at some point in your life. And that statement is, it's just a sunnah. Does that sound familiar? Oh, why don't you do this? It's just a sunnah. Honestly, that is one of the most painful statements that I've heard in my life. It's so painful because I know that the person who's saying it doesn't know who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was. That person doesn't know how much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved them. One day, Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I noticed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in a good mood. He was cheerful. So she said to herself, let me take advantage of the situation. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is happy. So she said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Please make dua for me So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Allahum maghfir li Aisha Ma taqaddama min dhanbiha wa ma taakhar Ma asrat wa ma a'lant O oh Allah, forgive for Aisha All of her past sins and all of her future sins, the ones she did in private, in secret, and the ones she did in public, in front of someone. Now what do you think Aisha radiallahu anha's reaction was? She was overcome with joy. And she said, I started laughing. And have you heard of the expression that when you laugh, you kind of fall? She said, I laughed so much, I fell into the lap of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he was puzzled, Aisha, does this dua make you happy? And she said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, why wouldn't this dua make me so happy? And he said, by Allah, he swore, I make this supplication, this dua, for every one of the members of my ummah in every prayer. Think about that for a second. Do you even make dua for yourself in every prayer? Think about the dhuhr prayer you pray at work when you're quickly playing in a corner hoping that nobody notices you. Do you remember to make dua for yourself in your sujood? Think about the times you've prayed in a fitting room praying that the lady doesn't come in and say, excuse me ma'am, do you need help? Did you make dua for yourself in that prayer? 
Think about the time you needed to pray and there was no time until Asr. And so you were outside, out and about, and you found a corner and you quickly prayed. Did you make dua for yourself in that prayer? But the Prophet وسلم, he loved you more than you can love yourself because he made dua for you in every prayer. He even missed you, like Imam Siraj mentioned. One day he was sitting and he was visibly sad. And he said, I miss my brothers. I wish I could meet them. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, we're right here. Aren't we your brothers? And he said, no, you are my companions. My brothers are those who will come later. And they'll believe in me, even though they never saw me. That's you. The Prophet ﷺ missed you. The Prophet ﷺ longed to meet you. How could you say? It's just a sunnah. And the Prophet ﷺ told us, in a very long narration, but because I have very limited time, I'm going to condense that narration for you all. In this very nar long narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that on the Day of Judgment, when the people are waiting, and they're waiting, and the sun is so hot, and they're sweating, and the horrors of the Day of Judgment are happening, they're waiting. And they say to themselves, why don't we go and ask someone to intercede for us with Allah so that Allah can relieve us from the situation that we're in right now? So they think to them, they talk amongst themselves and they say, why don't we go to Adam alayhi salam? Adam alayhi salam, he's the father of the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him with his own hands. Allah put him in Jannah. Let's go ask him. And so the people go to Adam alayhi salam and they ask him to go intercede. And he says, no, I can't. Not me, not me. Go to Nuh. So the people run and they go to Nuh alayhi salam. And they ask him, why don't you go and intercede for us? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to quicken this day of judgment. And Nuh alayhi salam says, no, I can't do that. Go to Khalil al-Rahman, go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And so they go to Ibrahim alayhi salam and they ask Ibrahim alayhi salam, Oh Ibrahim, you're Khalil Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten this day for us. And he goes, no, not me, not me. Go to Isa alayhi salam. So they go to Isa. Every prophet tells them, go to some other prophet, go to some other prophet. Isa alayhi salam goes, no, not me. Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And so the people will go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they'll say, Ya Rasulullah, please intercede for us. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, will say, I am for it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will ask permission to enter the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and permission will be granted. And then he will make sujood and in sujood he will make uh, dua and tasbih and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way he's never done it before. Allah will teach him something. And then he'll get, Allah will tell him, get up, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ask me and I'll give you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will get up and he'll say, Ya Allah, my Ummah, my followers, Ya Rabbi. And so Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will give him permission to intercede. And listen to what he's going to do. Authentic hadith. He says, I will go out and I will go to the hellfire and I will take out the members of my Ummah that are in it. And then I'll go back to Allah and I'll make sujood again and I'll beg him again and Allah will tell me, raise your hand, head, O Muhammad, and ask, you will be given. And then he'll say, Ya Allah, my, my nation, my nation. And Allah will say, okay, go. And he'll go again. And he'll go collecting the members of his ummah. And he'll do that a third time. I want you to imagine. Imagine everything that the Prophet ﷺ went through. I want you to imagine that the Prophet ﷺ, that was his day to rest. After 23 years of trial and tribulation, after 23 years of fighting for this ummah, helping this ummah, teaching this ummah, it was his time to go to Jannah and rest. But he didn't want to enjoy the pleasures of Jannah without you. So next time you hear that that's a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, Please don't say it's just a sunnah. So inshallah tonight I'm going to share with you a sunnah. 
a beautiful sunnah. And it's a secret that inshallah will change your life. How can I be so confident that it will change your life? Because it's a sunnah of the Prophet And what is that sunnah? It's the sunnah of mindfulness. Now I know you all have heard this word because it's a buzzword right now. Everyone's talking about mindfulness these days. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is a state of being active and open, attentive to the present moment. And recently, researchers have been studying mindfulness. And they've come to the conclusion that practicing mindfulness improves both your mental and physical well-being. It has so many positive benefits it, it, that include lowering stress, lowering your blood pressure, decreasing your anxiety and your depression, helps reducing uh, negative effects of ruminating, it improves relationship satisfaction, improves our overall health, reduces chronic pain, <laughs> improves sleep, and the list goes on and on. But we didn't need all of these studies in the past 50 years to tell us that practicing mindfulness was beneficial. And the value of mindfulness, because it's a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it and taught us to do it, that means it was important. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala from His infinite mercy and generosity sent to us the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said about him, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a complete and perfect role model and example for you and I to follow until the end of times. And so, this beautiful skill of mindfulness, the sunnah of mindfulness, I've looked into the life of the Prophet ﷺ, and because I have a little bit of time, I'm going to share with you four categories of mindfulness that the Prophet ﷺ practiced. Would you guys like me to share all four? Bismillah. Allahumma la sahla. I hope I can do it in the very limited time I have. Bismillah. Number one, the sunnah of being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was authentically narrated in Sunan at Tirmidhi that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, one day I was riding behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to me, young man, I will teach you some words. Very important words, pay attention. Be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find Allah before you. And if you ask, ask from Allah. And if you seek help, seek help from Allah. Very long hadith. We can talk about this hadith for three weeks. Very limited time, so I'm just going to quickly go through them. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said, One day I went to the Prophet sallallahu and I said, Ya Rasulullah, instruct me, give me some advice. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I advise you to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it will beautify all of your affairs. It will improve everything in your life. We didn't need these studies to tell us that practicing mindfulness benefits every aspect of our life. And I want you to close your eyes for a moment and imagine, take yourself back to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And let's zoom into his hujura, into his room. And imagine it's right before Fajr. And the Prophet ﷺ is either standing in prayer with tears flowing, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or taking a short nap after a long night of prayer. And then Bilal radiallahu anhu comes and asks permission. Ya Rasulullah, may I make adhan? And adhan is called. And the Prophet Sallallahu wakes up, rubs his eyes so mindfully. He says, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyani ba'dama amatani wa ilayhi nushur. Oh Allah, thank you for giving me life after you've caused me to die. And to you I will return. There's actually around 10 athkar that I found that the Prophet Sallallahu used to say when he would wake up. Remembering Allah. And he would take a miswak, a siwak, a toothbrush, and he would brush his teeth. He was mindful of Allah, know, knowing that the siwak pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he would get up and put on his garments, he would put them on so mindfully, saying, Alhamdulillah, ladhi kasani hadha thiyab, wa razaqanihi min ghayri hawla minni wa laquwa. All praises, gratitude is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who, who gifted me this clothes. And I had nothing to do with it. I had no power 
to get this close to me. Subhanallah. He was mindful when he made an intention to go to the masjid. When he would leave his house, he would mindfully say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. He would say, in the name of Allah, I trust in Allah. There's no might, no power except that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he taught us and he said, whoever leaves their home and says this dua, it will be said to him that you have been sufficed and protected and the devils will be far away from him on that day, subhanAllah. He was mindful while entering the masjid, saying the dua using his right leg. Mindful. Mindfully entering the masjid and praying the two rak'at of tahiyyat al-masjid. Mindful. He was even mindful when it's difficult to be mindful. Can I tell you when it's the most difficult time to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Especially for women? At the mall. Try it. Next time you're looking in between the purses and the shoes, try to remember to make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very difficult. But listen, the Prophet sallallahu when he was in the marketplace, he would say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd yuhyi wa yumit wa huhayin la yamut biyadihi al-khayr wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And he said, whoever says this while they're in a market will get one million good deeds. Allahu Akbar. He's incentivizing us to practice mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in difficult situations. And he said, Allah will erase from his book of sins one million sins. And in another narration, Allah will build for him a house in paradise. There are so many countless examples of how the Prophet sallallahu was mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering Allah in all circumstances. But I have a few minutes left and I want to finish the other three ways that the Prophet sallallahu was mindful. But inshallah, I want you all to make the intention right now that you're going to be more mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to make more dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next time you're standing in line at the grocery store, instead of grabbing your phone and mindlessly scrolling, mindfully say the dua of the marketplace a few times. Mindfully say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, insha'Allah ta'ala. Number two, the Prophet ﷺ shared with us the sunnah of being mindful of your own feelings. Amazing sunnah. Mindful of your feelings. Once the Prophet ﷺ was going to go visit his son Ibrahim. And when he went to go visit his son Ibrahim, he held him. And he smelled him. And he was so happy to see him. But then he realized that he was gasping for air. Ibrahim started gasping for air and Ibrahim died in the Prophet ﷺ's arms. Now when he died in the Prophet ﷺ's arms, he said something very powerful. He said, The eyes, they shed tears. The heart feels sad. He was mindful of the feelings that he felt. He knew he was feeling sadness. And then he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, to bless Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, Ibrahim. And he said that he was sad at being separated from Ibrahim, from his son. The Prophet sallallahu he taught us so many du'as of emotions where he labeled his emotions. He was mindful of what he was feeling and he turned that emotion into a prayer to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have two minutes. So I'm going to quickly, quickly, quickly go through the next two points. The sunnah of being mindful of those around you, especially your loved ones. One of the most beautiful forgotten sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ is to be mindful, to be present when we're with our loved ones. We're a generation that's so distracted. We're distracted by our phones, we're distracted by our smartwatches, we're distracted by the TVs that are plastered everywhere. We're distracted by our own thoughts. But the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us to be mindful when we're with our loved ones. One beautiful narration that I read that Ashab al seer they've mentioned, that the Prophet ﷺ was once gifted a ring. Now if you think about the Prophet's life, he didn't have many possessions like us. So that ring was like, wow. 
Think about the first time you get a new phone or something, how you're like wowed by it. And so the Prophet ﷺ was once sitting with one of his companions and while he was talking to one of his companions, his eye glanced on that ring. The Prophet ﷺ realized that he did that. He took the ring off and he gifted it in sadaqah. He was not mindful with his companion, so he removed that distraction. The Prophet ﷺ was mindful of his wife's mood. He said, Ya Aisha, I know when you're happy and I know when you're sad. Once the Prophet ﷺ, he was so mindful, he saw that Aisha عنها, was looking outside of the window and he went there and he said, do you want to watch the Abyssinians? The Prophet ﷺ was mindful even of children. And I'll end with this. And number four, inshallah, I'll post for you on my social media accounts tonight. Beautiful narration, subhanAllah, how he was mindful even with children. The ones that we're usually least mindful with. One day, after one of the expeditions, the children of Medina, they ran to the outskirts of Medina, waiting to greet their fathers that are just coming back from the battlefield, or their uncles, or their grandfathers, or their brothers. And amongst them was Bashir. Now when the Prophet ﷺ was entering with the Sahaba, he noticed this Bashir, this young boy, standing on top of a rock, looking, tiptoeing and looking, and looking, and looking, and then realizing that everyone was back but my dad's not back. And the Prophet ﷺ would stay at the end of the army to ensure that everyone was moved forward. And so he was at the end and he saw this young boy crying. And so he goes up to him and he said, what makes you sad? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, everyone's father came back, but my father didn't come back. And so the Prophet ﷺ hugged him and carried him and caressed his head. And the child kept crying, so the Prophet ﷺ said, Would it not make you consoled and comforted and a little bit happy that I will be your father from now on and Aisha will be your mother? Be mindful. Practice mindfulness. And inshallah, you will see your life change. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same way that He gathered us here, that He gathers us with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannat al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.